everybody back to another episode of the Student to Life podcast where learning and unlearning has no limits. I'm your host, Stretch. My co-host, Shan, is not here, but I got some special guests with me today. I'm going to have all of them introduce themselves, starting my man over here. Juan Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Trey Juan Smith. Uh, Marquez Calloway. And um, all these guys are football players. So what position do you play, my boy? Play wide receiver for the New Orleans Saints. I also play wide receiver for the Saints. I play for the Broncos. Uh, so, <laughs> what position? Oh, wide receiver, <laughs> Broncos. So, um, so all you guys are now professionals, right? So, did you guys always want to be football players? Starting. With you? Uh, I grew up playing football. That was, you know, what I'm saying that was a, a, a motive of mine. But honestly, I wanted to play in. I wanted to be in the MLB. That was that was my thing. I was a baseball player. You know what I'm saying? Did football on the side. You know what I'm saying? So, so what made you make, make up your mind? Like, this is what I'm gonna do. College. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> it was it was pretty much easier to get a, a football scholarship than a baseball scholarship. So we was like, yo, we gonna we gonna get a football scholarship and we just gonna play both sports. Right. And then when I got to college, they was like, yeah, you know, we got full uh, all year round football. Right. So I, I ain't had no time to play baseball, which was my first love, so. Yeah, you would you really ever go back to baseball? If I could, I would. I mean, I'll practice it. I ain't gonna try to go to the MLB. I lost it. Right. They lost me like four years ago. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Trey? Was football your first choice? Uh, definitely, definitely was my uh, my first choice. Uh, but I didn't play like growing up. I didn't play any organized football like right. for the Delray Rocks or anything. Mm -hmm. Like I. I missed that whole part of football, uh, but I always knew that I definitely, you know, wanted to be in the NFL. Uh, I plan to stay in the NFL probably like four more years, mm -hmm. but uh, my end goal is not sports. My end goal is to become a high school uh, teacher and a coach. So, so if you didn't play football, you would be a, a coach and a teacher. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. I, I love kids, and then uh, basically growing up, the coaches I had at Village Academy. They, uh, the way they molded me, you know, uh, from a young man to a man going into college, mm -hmm. I want to have that basically same uh, effect on kids. So that's why I'm doing that. I don't have the patience to be a teacher, but I commend you for it. <laughs> no, it's tough. It's tough, you know, dealing with kids all day. But uh, yeah, trust me, I, know that. <laughs> I like kids. <laughs> hey, so if it's your passion, man, go after it. What about you, bro? You always want to play football? Uh, kind of like Quan's answer. Uh, my first love was basketball. Basketball? KB, sorry. <laughs> uh, my first love was basketball, so I tried to quit football, actually. Really? Yeah. <laughs> In college? No, nah, high school, sophomore oh, yeah? year. And um, a couple of coaches, a couple of guys taught me out of it. Mom, dad told me, you know, just keep going, keep my options open. And then, like, KB, <laughs> I got to college, they told me I could do both, which right. I kind of knew in the back of my head they wouldn't let me do both, right. especially basketball. So um, I had to short-live that dream but end up taking the football route. What if, so what if there was an option to go back and play basketball? Would no, for sure. I would. For sure. I'd play baseball, for sure. This, this is on me. Um, <laughs> for sure. I thought that was a general question. <laughs> this episode of the Student to Life podcast is sponsored by Vintage Floors and Events. For the Valentine's Day flowers, for your Mother's Day flowers, for your Christmas, your anniversary, whatever you need these flowers for, these teddy bears, whatever arrangements, you could hit up Vintage Floors and Events. Yes. The number to call to make orders, place orders for, for more info is 754-423-4673. So um, I play basketball, right? And for basketball players, the, the workouts are not that like aggressive. But I know for football players, y'all work out heavy and a lot. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference with working out in the on season and in the off season? During the on season, you know, we got games every Sunday, Monday, or whatever, you know, Thursdays. Mm -hmm. But so it's more so keeping your body recovered and just you know keeping it intact. You know, what I'm saying you don't want to lose any strength, but you're not necessarily building strength either. You know what I'm right. saying? You just maintain it for the season, you know what I'm saying? Trying not to get hurt, trying to, uh, it's more preventative workouts. And then in the off season, oh, you going at it. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, 
you know, so, you, well, you we're, get a strength. We're here with, with basketball players. Like, after a game, they're just going to party. Like, you guys have time for that? <laughs> oh, nah. No, it's no secret for them because they say it. Like when they come to Miami, they party. I mean, the win. Oh yeah, we party. It, you know what I'm saying? We 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 have a good time after a game. A right. game. What? A bad game? Just going back to the hotel. Bad bad game. We're going home. Uh, it it, it depends though. Right. Because uh, like we like I know uh, we all know like basketball players and like. They don't have curfew on game day. Yeah. Exactly. Like we have curfew. We got bed check. They they have no curfew or anything. And then even like for us, football players, home games, we gotta stay at the hotel even though we in our own city. Right. Basketball players, they get to go home. Yeah. Like, they go into their family. They do. So what about what about what about you? Uh, for in the off season and on season we're working out. I say Kind of like what he said, on on season is really just maintaining and trying to keep your body. I mean, everybody's going to break down. Right. The key is to try to prevent that and last as long as we can. So we do a lot of recovery work. We do a lot of um, basically maintenance on our body. It's right. not necessarily lifting hard and going at it like we would in the off season. Now, in off season, like, that's the time where we prefer. We perfect our craft. That's the time where we get in the gym. That's the time we get in the lab and right. work on everything that we either lost or need to work on. Okay. So I'm going to start with you now. What about eating, right? Because we know when you're working out, you got to stay on a certain diet, right? <laughs> and I know a lot of guys, especially when you're young and you go into, like, sports, a lot of guys be eating trash. Right. I used to do the same thing before I stopped doing that. But what's your, like, your, your diet, like... <laughs> Uh, we was talking about this earlier. <laughs> um, diet is more than half, honestly, because if you put bad stuff in, you're going to put bad stuff out. Right. So the better, the more better stuff you put in your body, the better you're going to be. You're going to feel better. You're going to play better. You're going to act better. You're going to have healthier skin. Mm -hmm. I know. So <laughs> um, active. <laughs> but um, no, nah, diet is definitely more than, to me, is more than half. Right. Because you can do all the physical. You can do everything else. But um, if you put bad stuff in, it's like you're starting up back at square one. Right. What about you, Trevor? Well, I'm glad you said it to you because <laughs> for me, I used to, uh, honestly, I used to think diet, like, play, like, a huge, huge role. Uh, I feel like uh, you can really eat kind of whatever you want, but as long as you take that extra step, the extra step to work it off and, like, uh, don't eat it all the time, but, like, honestly, I eat whatever I want because I know when I get in the gym, like, I'm going to go hard. Like, right. I'm going to burn the calories off and then, like, what we do for them, we run all day. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm gonna run it off anyway, so that's the way I think about it. So my diet is is very open and that's whatever you want to eat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Oh, I, just, I eat whatever. Diet. Like like Trey said, I eat whatever because I know I'm gonna work it off, and I'm gonna sleep it off. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, and you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, if I gotta cut down, you know, I'll change the 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 amount instead of what I eat. So instead of instead of two Popeyes chicken sandwiches. I'll just eat one. Yeah, I, I wish I could do that playing basketball. Playing with an eight count, not the 24. Playing basketball and do that, that's not, not your 24. knees will go quick if you try something like that with basketball. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so um, what, how does it affect like you guys having a family, like to, to try not going home, especially after every game, right? Mm -hmm. How does that affect you having a family? Uh, honestly, I feel like uh, as you get used to it, like, Kind of like, uh, as a kid, like, you play uh, football, like, you know what I mean? You got travel games, so you expect not to see your parents unless your parents travel to the game. Right. But I feel like the older you get, the more used to it you get. Uh, I don't have any kids, so, like, some of my teammates have kids, so I don't know what it's like, you know, missing my wife or missing my kid. Right. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know what that feel like. So mm -hmm. I'm kind of used to, you know, not seeing my family, you know, for a long periods of time. So that's, that's what I'm used to. What about you? Um, yeah, I, I kind of got used to used to not seeing them. <laughs> and, you know, but I, I talk to them every single day. Mm -hmm. Don't matter what time of the day it is. Good morning, mom. Good morning, sis. Good morning, dad. You know what I'm saying? And I do got to, you know what I'm saying? We talk here and there, you know what I'm saying? Cool, though. <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, we, we keep in touch other ways instead of always having to go home or, you know, they'll they'll come down to New Orleans and come visit me and everything. So that's how we, we stay in touch. Uh, kind of similar, you know, 
we don't really see our families like that. I mean, it's been like that since, for me, it's been like that since college, you know. Mm-hmm. Like you said, away games and home games, they they don't really can come up. You know, that's a far drive. That's a long flight for them. So, right. Uh, like, like Quan, uh, talk on the phone, we text, we always talk, always keep updated, you know. So what I, what, I, what I know is that that life can be can be lonely because I know you got to take your teammates now as your family because you travel together and everything. But do they do they like have like therapists for you guys like for somebody for you to talk to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Oh, you go. Oh, <laughs> do y'all do y'all go? Y'all go? No, to no, no, no. They're like, I got them. They're like, I got them. <laughs> Call them. Man. That's it. They listen to everything. So y'all talking about the deepest, darkest secrets with, with with your boys? Yeah, these like, like we. Yeah. From teammates to like brothers, like the best friends, like these are my guys, man. Uh, so y'all don't believe in therapy? Uh, I do, I really do, but I, I'm not. That's a little hypocritical. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I don't. Cause like, I do. So let me know. Let me, let me know why you don't. Cause like, obviously the therapist got problems too. Cause you know they they took like you talk to them, you put your problems on them, and now they gotta go home and put you know on somebody else. Right. So like, I just feel like that's against code. Oh, they can't do that. I never thought of that. Yeah, the therapist got a therapist. Help the therapist. That's what I'm saying. So like, I just you know. Yeah, I, mean? I talked to a therapist. The, the therapist got a therapist. Gonna, what you gonna do? Talking to Mary? That's a problem. The therapist got a therapist. Talk yeah, the therapist got a therapist. Then who gonna help that therapist? The same thing. It's a chance. The the therapist. Therapist. That's crazy. That's why. I, look, I ain't gonna. I ain't even gonna do that to y'all therapists. I, I I agree on therapy, but like I said, I'm a little hypocritical because me personally, I don't think I could. <laughs> yeah. But I do think it's good to talk and yeah. get it off. Your chest, I mean, if you get off your mind. The good thing is a lot of people don't have nobody to talk to. You get what I'm saying? A lot of people have stuff that they've been through that they wouldn't even repeat to anybody. So when you go in therapy, you get to talk about it and unpack everything. A lot of people just see going through like abuse and all that stuff in relationships, like a lot of people don't know how to work through that, especially going through a simple breakup. There's people that want to kill themselves just before going through a breakup. So a lot of people just don't have nobody to talk to when it comes to stuff like that. Hey everyone, if you are here in South Florida, please check out Skyless Hair Studio. That's S-K-Y-L-Y-S-T, where we specialize in hair care, locks, colors, cuts, you can all do that good too. stuff. Yes, we definitely do men's hair as well, okay? So we are here in Tamarack, Florida. Check us out and we'll take care of all your hair a little bit. So where can they find you? You can find us at CEO Your Life underscore Skyless Hair Studio on Instagram or online at skylesshairstudio.com. Hey. All right. So um, I always wanted to ask like a football player, a basketball player this question. A lot of times we, like, when you get into the league, you, you're coming from like an impoverished situation where you never had money, your family never had money. And then overnight, all of a sudden you have all this money, right? How do you maneuver having friends from like high school or your community that might look at you differently or you gotta maybe step away from because they don't understand you know, the life that you're about to live right now? Uh, what's up over here? I tell them no. <laughs> That's it? Easy like Yeah, yo, you know, bro, I can't do it right now, you know, so I gotta help family. I be lying. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them no, I be lying, you know what I'm saying? You know, but if it's, if it's you know, somebody close to me that really needs money, you know what I'm saying, like, I, I, I help, I help them. Sometimes it's not, it's not even about asking for money, it's like sometimes it's, it's even hanging out, you know? Oh. Like that's they want you, you come in town and they want to go to the club or they want to go. Yeah, that, that's definitely hard because yeah. I just came from home and I had a lot of people. I, I try not to tell a lot of people I'm home just for that reason mm-hmm. because honestly, I'm only home for two or three days and I can't see everybody that I grew up with. I can't see everybody I used to hang out with when I go home. So I usually try to keep it short and sweet. I go home, see all my family, see a couple friends, mm-hmm. and then head out. Right. What about you, Joe? Uh, I'm the same way, like, Quaz in the aspect of, like, I don't even be here long, like, and then, <laughs> like, the dude, the time I do tell people I'm here, I be going, like, the next day, so. Right. Uh, but it's hard, you know what I mean? Uh, especially, you know, when you feel like people changing, you know, mm-hmm. based, based on, you know, what you got and where you at, 
So, and it's hard, you know, telling people, especially people you love, like, you can't do it for them right now. Right. Like, even though you can, but, like, it's kind of, and I've seen it, like, like as I'm growing older, like, and, like, wising up, like, when you, like, give somebody an inch, they take a mile, and mm -hmm. then they, they just start being abusive, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you look they like a bad person right. for not, you know, helping them out or giving them, but, you know what I mean? Sometimes they got to be like that. And I think a lot of times when you when you try to please everybody and you, you invite everybody in your circle, now somebody does something stupid that reflects on you. Like you're driving in the car and this this, this person got like, say for instance, a gun on them and they, they get pulled over, you're getting in trouble too. Or just because you're a person who has a name. I remember one time I went to pick up a, a friend of mine after like we had practice and the dude had a whole bag of coke with him. I'm like, yo. <laughs> Why would you bring that? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if we get pulled over, all of us going down for something like that. Yeah. So I just think that that's something that you got to be, even being here in America and going back to Jamaica, it's like everybody's looking to you to do something for them. Right. Like, being able to say no a lot of times is hard, but you, but, you, but you have to, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. They told me to always find somebody your mom, your agent, somebody to be that no person, be that bad guy. <laughs> so send them off to somebody. Right. somebody else. <laughs> Yo, that's my mama. She's gonna tell you no. <laughs> so, um, um, you guys want kids? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think this this one over here wants kids. He's next. Me? He's next. I'm not sure. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I want I want a lot of kids, man. I want a big family. I want to support all my family, man. So. I want to be in the cannon. Man, no, no. no. <laughs> I'll be a great golf <laughs> man. Remember that. Got got one and one only, and you're gonna have multiple. That's it. Yep. So how does that work? What you mean? You said you wanna have one, one girl, one only one girl. Multiple, multiple kids. kids. Because just, just yeah. one person that wanna be yeah. married one day. Yeah. I wanna be married. I definitely aspire to be married. What about you, Jared? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the same boat with KB. Uh, KB uh, definitely want a wife one day, and I want at least like five kids. Yeah. Uh, growing up, uh, I had a big family, like brothers and sisters. So like, I know it's that know it's as like growing up, you know, just to be around them, and, and you know, I don't want my kid to be by itself, uh, you know, lonely. <laughs> I'll be a great uh, father. I mean, so you want to get? No, I do. I do. Uh, I'll tell it now. <laughs> you putting in your bid from now? Yeah, yeah. Sure. So y'all know now. Remember this. So, <laughs> but now I say, I do want a wife and kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many. So you think wives or how many? Oh, no. kids. <laughs> how many kids? Okay, come on now. So being, <laughs> being in the league, um, do you, don't you guys think it's easier to, to wait until you get out because of the schedule? Mm -hmm. It's different for everybody. Yeah. Some people come in the league, like high school sweetheart, you know, um, college sweetheart, or some people come in the league, meet their wives in the league. So, um, I... <laughs> <laughs> Which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> this ain't about me, all right? I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. I'm going to plead the fifth on that one. Yeah, but I think it's different for everybody. Right. What about you? Uh, for me, I, I think it's... Is better off said, like, you can meet somebody while you're in the league, but uh, due to, you know, all the traveling and everything, uh, I feel like uh, y'all should try to get to know each other, from my from my opinion, like, just try to get to know each other. And then, like, when you done with your career, when I'm done with my career, like, hey, I'm done, like, hey, let's talk about, you know, moving in together, mm -hmm. you know, ready to have kids, like, I don't have to travel no more, I can be home. So that's four more years. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hanging, hanging, hanging. Can you say the question again, please? <laughs> I'm trying to skip the question. No, nah, I say, can you repeat it, please? Oh, oh, I'm yeah. saying, like, um, do you want to be settled down, married, and um, do, do you think it's better to do that after you get out of the league, or you can do it while you're in the league? Like, well, it's different for everybody, man. I, I... which one are you? <laughs> <laughs> that's not what he asked. <laughs> but, I, I, I get married anyway. I, I mean, you know what I'm saying? My girl I'm talking to now, yeah, I, I've, I've met her before. <laughs> before I got to the league. So, you know, I, I do aspire to get married while I'm in the league. So the, this next question is going to be maybe for these two guys. Because yeah, you, got, you, guys. Got, you got somebody, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> 
I do. So are you guys single, by the way? Because I don't want to. I don't want to put y'all on the spot. Trait for us. <laughs> Trait. I know. I know. Sure. Oh. Wait, nah, 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 nah. nah, nah. <laughs> the uh, the uh, nah, I am not. I'm not single. I'm um, currently, you know, talking to someone. Right. I really like, so I'm gonna say no. I'm not single. Right. Taken. So, but well, I'm gonna make it a general question then, right? For the next question I was about to ask. So, being in the league, is it hard to actually date somebody because you don't know what their their motives are? Mm. Basically, if they want you for just what you got or the attention that you got or they're just a genuine person who just wants you just for you. No, it's definitely hard. uh, Because like you said, you know, you got to try to figure out why this person in your life, do they really like you or do they, you know, want what you have? Like, you know, uh, then you got to analyze, you know, how they helping you, what they bring to the table, you know, is the, are they adding to the table or are they taking away from the table? So uh, it's hard because you got to try to figure somebody out what's their true intentions. Right. For what? For you. Not for you, but just a general answer because I, I, I feel like y'all, y'all don't want to get caught up. <laughs> I'm not going to get caught up with nothing. <laughs> and, but I, I do agree with Trey. And we, we had these conversations in the locker room, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, how did you meet your wife? Like, when did you meet her and everything? Mm-hmm. Like, like what made you, you know what I'm saying, want to wife her, you know what I'm saying? It, and it's, it, it goes down to the <laughs> things that Trey said, you know what I'm saying? Like, why does she marry you? Is it is it because of love? Is it because of money? You know what I'm saying? And that's something that we got to figure out on our own because even though they tell you one thing, they could mean another. So right. it, it, it kind of boils down to that and, you know, your heart. Whatever your heart desires. Your heart, huh? Your heart. <laughs> um, it's definitely difficult. Like you said, like both of them say, not knowing if someone really wants you or loves you for you. Mm-hmm. So you go through this little road where you're not sure, you're not all the way in. Now it feels like you're holding back, you're not putting all in. And honestly, it's just something you got to feel because not all women are bad you know right. what I mean? not all of them gonna try to do you dirty so but that's just hard for us to distinguish and put us in a hard spot i personally think they should have like a training like a training class for guys that's just getting into that into the league or just getting into money for, for stuff like that how to go about about investing in money and where to put the money you have that right yeah we got that yeah so yeah, all types of meetings yeah <laughs> all types of meetings about every it. year i think they need to give basketball players that Y'all don't have that? I don't think basketball players have that. Yeah, I need most. Yeah. yeah. You know, I heard about a football program. They see their face. They don't see our face. Them boys go to Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> them boys be going to Vegas when they got their money. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, um, so before we get to the last thing, I want to talk about um, injuries, though. Um, how, how do you guys go about preventing injuries? Because I know, Trey, you've probably been in the league probably longer than these two guys. Are. Yeah, correct. Uh... Ooh. <laughs> Honestly, uh, throughout my time so far, like I, like I, I did different like regiments to figure out, you know, uh, how to keep my body healthy as possible, like from massages, you know, nutrition, and uh, just being off your feet, relaxing. Uh, but it's been hard for me throughout my career so far. Like I tried many different things, but every year, like I always like end up getting hurt or something like that. So I changed it this, next year. Still got hurt, changed it next year, still got hurt. I just feel like, uh, man, uh, it's hard to prevent, seriously prevent an injury. Like, it's going to happen, you know, and God's will, like, you know what I mean? You get hurt, you know, you got to take the time, come back stronger. Uh, but it's and, and there's a big part about injuries. It's like, it's very mental. That's what I was going to ask you. Too. Like, uh, man, I think it was like two years ago, like, I got hurt and I tried to come back. And I messed it up. Like, and I got, <laughs> I was out for like six weeks. And man, like, I was like in my head so bad. Mm-hmm. Like, I was just like, I didn't want to talk to nobody, even my family. Like, it was just bad. Like, uh, but you know what I mean? You got to, you know, stay close with God, have a conversation with God, and mm-hmm. you'll get through it. So, so one to one, I know, like, for, for basketball players, when you're injured, it's, it's terrible because you want to be on the court so bad. Like, that's just, it's keeping you from what you really want to do. So yeah. it affects you so much mentally. And then sometimes you try to force yourself to go back before you, you're fully healed. You just damage it all over again. So what about for you guys, how you prevent injury? 
Man, I was a kid. And somebody told me, no way. sleep is the best recovery. So I sleep a lot. And <laughs> look, I don't want to jinx myself. I don't like to talk about injuries. Right. I've been, I've been, I've been straight. You know what I'm saying? I want to stay like that. But I, I go to sleep a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Y'all do like y'all, y'all do like um um ice baths and and yoga and stuff. Nah, like I go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I even... no, I'm like KB. Hey, I used to I used to do that. Like I said, I tried like literally everything, but I just kept getting hurt. So I just chill and go to sleep, and relax. Hey, what about V? Uh, I do that too, but just, just go to sleep. <laughs> I do that too, but. Um, I don't know. Them ice bags would be too cold. I don't know if it's the ice. The ice? <laughs> it's supposed to be cold. Um, I don't know. Everybody has their different thoughts about it, you know. Um, I met a longtime vet and said he stopped doing ice baths like his second, third year in the right. So some people think it works. Some people don't think. It's really up to you. Um, kind of like Trey, um, you can't really prevent an injury. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. Is it because of the contact with the sport? It can be anything. You can be walking, you can be running on the field and roll an ankle. God forbid. You can be doing something non-athletic and just get hurt. It's just, ha- it just happens. You can do things to prevent it, like try to, or like try to prevent it. But I mean, at the end of the day, for basketball, for basketball is a bit is a bit different because you you can do things to actually prevent it because, like like for LeBron for instance, he spends a certain amount of money on his body every single year to do different. He spends money on a chef. Not everybody on, got LeBron money. Nah, you're right about that. <laughs> you're completely right about that. One. But, but there's there's things that 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 I think guys can do to to, to keep your body like right. young and in shape, especially that yoga. I do yoga now, and man, that it works. I tell you, right now. I'm too stiff for all that, man. <laughs> that's the point of yoga. You're right. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's the point. Of yoga. I try yoga like oh, four different times. It'll make you faster than me. No, I'm already faster than you, so yeah. Oh Lord, let's go. That's a flex, bro. Yeah. Nah, let's go. Ask Dr. Smash. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, um, I'm going to ask you, Trey, about your faith, right? Yes. Because when, I, when I, I went through your page and I went on, online and stuff, everything, you, you circle everything around your faith, right? So how deeply do you, you know, believe in that? Um, I believe in God 100%. You know, even though I'm, like, I probably don't be in church a lot with... Uh, you know, my mom told me, like, even though you don't go to church, as long as you believe in him and you have the conversations with him and you pray every night, uh, you'll be fine. You know what I mean? You don't always have to be in, in the house of God. Mm-hmm. You know, it's great to be, you know, in the house of God with other, you know, other his kids, you know, worshiping together. But uh, you don't have to be, be be there. So I'm not always there, but I'm constantly praying, constantly being thankful, you know, for the little things. So right. my faith is uh, very strong. Well, for you. Yeah, I mean, same. You know, I'm not always in church, uh, but me and my family, we, you know, my dad sends a prayer to us every, every, every single day. You know what I'm saying? I got the Bible out, so, you know what I'm saying? The Lord is always around, you know what I'm saying? I'm steady believing in the Lord, you know what I'm saying? Some go good, some go bad, you know, indifferent in between. I'm still relying on the Lord, you know what I'm saying? I'm very deep in faith and, you know what I'm saying? I, I worship Him every night, even though, you know, I'm not in church every Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, but I, I'm, I'm very deep into it. All right. Um, same, honestly, you know, faith, <laughs> faith is everything. You know, you see a lot of places have the three L's faith, family, football. Mm-hmm. And that's honestly all we, we do. I mean, we have friends and we have social life and stuff, but when it boils down to it, I feel like most, or if not every athlete, will say those three. And, you know, I have friends who send me, like, we play on Sundays, so it's kind of hard for us to go to church. Right. The, days we do, <laughs> the days we do have off, you know, a lot of people, you know, sleep, right. try to recover, but um, there's other ways. We have chapel night before or the morning of, so it's not that we don't miss church. We always have means to go to church. You know, right. friends send their scripture from what they learn from church. Right. It's just always around. Okay, so you guys are in town for the the football camp, which is tomorrow. Yeah, that's Trey Cohen Smith has his football camp every year. 
here in Delray Beach, and you guys just um, came through. So, Trey, for, for, for the camp tomorrow, right? What are mm -hmm. some of the things that you, you implement to, for the kids tomorrow? Uh, since we was on faith, uh, I had somebody come in and give a little sermon, you know, on faith. And uh, in the morning from uh, 9 to 11, it's uh, basically a football camp. I have uh, different drills out there teaching them, you know, some of the fundamentals and the, the basics. And then uh, after it's like the fun day, uh, basically I'm gonna have a whole bunch of games out there, game trucks, uh, slides and stuff, uh, bounce houses. Uh, basically a day uh, for them, you know, to remind them, you know, uh, it's not all about, you know, hard work all the time. It's okay to, you know, have fun, you know, with within uh, doing stuff that's within, like working hard. And then after it's always time to have fun and play around, so. So I'm going to ask all three of you guys a final question. Um, so for kids, right, what advice do you have for a child that want to go and in, like go into the NFL? They see you guys like, for instance, tomorrow and I'll be like, oh, I want to be like, I want to be like Trey. I want to be like KB. What, what's your advice to them, um, to those kids? What, what, advice, what advice would you give to them? Man, just don't stop working, man. And, and like Trey said, have fun with it. If you ain't having fun, you just, you, you don't love it. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's going to make it so much harder and everything. And, you know, like like we all explained, we got three different backgrounds. He want to play football. He want to play basketball. I want to play baseball. And we all ended up with the same thing because we just love the sport. We love competition. We love to have fun. So, you know what I'm saying? Just keep your head up. And, you know what I'm saying? And I encourage, I know y'all going to have somebody by y'all side because we all have somebody by our side. And, you know, <laughs> and, and just keep and keep pushing, man. That's all I had to say. Okay, cool. Your final word for Mm, my final would probably be just focus on yourself like Juan said everybody comes from different backgrounds everybody everybody has a different story if you start worrying about someone else's story then you'll get derailed from yours right. someone else's blessings might not be yours mm -hmm. at least not for now mm -hmm. so I say focus on you okay sure uh kind of like both of the, what both of them said uh Basically, everybody has a different path, you know what I mean? Like, some people go undrafted, you know what I mean? Some people, you know, been working their whole life and everything. But, uh, you know, you got to focus on yourself, you know, worry about you, you know what I mean? It, it may not be your time to shine right now, you know what I mean? Uh, it may be just, just so happen, like, you not playing right now, but because you're not playing right now, you working so hard on yourself and that next year you about to be the best player to come from wherever you come from. You know what I mean? So uh, everybody got a different path. Uh, just just focus on yours and don't, you know, don't shy away because, you know, the sun ain't shining on you right now. You know, it's just not your time. Just keep your head down and keep working. Uh, always when you, when you got a problem and nobody else want to listen, talk to God because, you know, he's always there to listen. That's facts. Um, for, for me, for me, what I would say is make sure that is your passion before you even want to pick it up. Because if you plan to do this one thing for the rest of your life, this is going to consume you, right? And you don't want to be going to college because I, I played ball with guys that went to college and didn't make it to the league and they had nothing else because they thought this was their, their gift when it wasn't. Because I played a lot of these guys and I'm like, I'm better than you. I didn't go to college, but I'm better than you. Oh. You pursued this thing all, all this thing all the way to college and you couldn't make it to the league. You know what I'm saying? So make sure this is what your calling is. And also, if you have a backup plan, make sure you also keep that in the bag too because it, anything can happen. You know what I'm saying? It could derail you from this one goal that you have to play football or basketball or whatever. So always have a plan B. Have to get an education too, because that's also important, especially financial education, because you don't want these people to rob you when you get this money too. So that's my final word. I want to thank you guys for coming on. Appreciate all the, the little knowledge that y'all gave me today. Appreciate you. Uh, Appreciate thank you. Appreciate you. Appreciate you for having us. I will see you guys again next time on the Student Life Podcast, where learning and unlearning has no limits. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe. See you.